Hello everyone and welcome back to Chesterton Road. I uh, hope you're all keeping safe and well. Uh, in this video we'll be taking a, a quick look at a, a new locomotive that I've bought uh, along with a, a decoder to go with it. Um, as you can see it's a, a Backman Class 66 um, in the Aggregate Industries livery. Um, it's not one that I'd intended to buy. Um, I wasn't really looking at buying any more locomotives at all at the moment. Um, but I'd seen this one crop up in a, a couple of other um, YouTube videos. Um, and when I looked at uh, the price that it's available for at the moment, um, it was a bit of a no-brainer really. Um, I picked this one up uh, along with the decoder for about £110, which for what is effectively a DCC fitted uh, locomotive is a, a pretty good price. Um, it's not one of the liveries that I would necessarily have chosen, um, but having got hold of it now and had a had a quick look at it and obviously look at looking at pictures online um, it's, it's really starting to grow on me um, so I, I can only assume it's not been a, a big seller for Backman um, hence the fact that it's on offer at such a good price at the moment but um, yeah so it's a really nice, nice looking locomotive I'm not going to do a review or an unboxing or anything like that I think everybody knows what a, what the box looks like and uh, what they look like inside um, but we'll get it out of the box, we'll get it onto the programming track, um, get the decoder fitted, uh, and we'll have a, a, a little bit of a closer look at it. Okay, so that's the locomotive out of the box. Um, and as you can see, it's a, it's a really nice looking machine. Um, the livery is really growing on me now. Uh, and it's, it's really well applied, really crisp, really nicely done, um, but as, as all Backman ones are. Um, and yeah, it will certainly add a... A little bit of colour to the to the layout. Um, so that's a locomotive. What I'll do now is I'll uh, show you the decoder that I'm going to use in it. So the decoder that I'm going to use with it is the DCC Concept uh, Zen V12 Black uh, decoder. Um, partly because it is very well priced. Um, I think it's about twenty twenty two pounds. Um, but also some of the features um, that it includes. Um, so it's a 21 pin decoder but it also comes with a an 8 pin wiring harness um, or adapter should you need to to adapt it if you've got an 8 pin uh, chassis um, but the other the other feature which it has which i'll just um, grab the instructions show you, show you on that um, it's got what they call a one set one step loco setup um, so depending on what you're going to use locomotive for so there's um, several different settings there for um, default setting, shunter, light freight, heavy freight, express freight, light engine, local branch passenger, stopping passenger, express passenger, and EMU or DMU. Um, you can pick, uh, by just by changing one CV, it'll alter uh, five different CVs, CVs two to six, which I believe are, are all to do with... Um, acceleration and uh, sort of top speed and deceleration um, so basically you, you can rather than having to alter all those cvs individually you just change the one setting one setting um, which is cv25 uh, to one of those the corresponding number and it will alter those cvs to match um, with this layout being an end-to-end -end shunting layout um, obviously I'll, I'll choose the shunter option which is um, option one um, which presumably will alter the the cvs to to sort of fine tune it for for low speed um, and sort of slow speed running um, so what i'll do now i um, i'll put the decoder into the locomotive um, again i'm not going to video that because it's a fairly straightforward operation i'm sure everyone's done it before uh, we'll do that and then um, we'll get onto the programming track and uh, just check that all is okay um, check the cv settings amend it on uh, to CV, CV25 to setting 1 for the shunter operation and then we can uh, get it onto the track and give it a test run. Okay so I've um, fitted the decoder and um, tested it on the programming track just to make sure it all, all works okay, there's no issues with it. Um, I've also amended uh, CV25 to 1 which is the um, shunting operation. Um, obviously the loco hasn't been run in properly yet so it's not running quite as smoothly as it as it should do um, but that's something I'll, I'll sort out in due course um, but uh, just to give you an idea of um, what changing CV25 has done 
um, as I said before, it's a, it's a shunting operation, so it reduces top speed and improves slow speed running. Um, but I'll just give you a quick demonstration. Um, if I if I just put and whack it round to to full power, um, you get an idea of what what the top speed is um, with this setting. So as you can see, the, the top speed is much reduced um, in this setting. I don't know what that would work out to. Um, as a scale speed, something probably 30, 35 miles an hour, something like that. Um, it gives you much more control over acceleration and deceleration uh, for slow, slow speed running. Uh, so once it's all running properly, and um, the track could probably do with a bit of a clean as well, just get it running properly. Um, but uh, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a, a good smooth runner. Um, a, a good addition to the fleet. Going back to the um, the price that I bought it for, um, it kind of got me thinking um, whether whether we'll ever see a a time where sort of ninety ninety five hundred pounds is the the standard price for the for the Backman model. Um, obviously, Hornby have got their their model at the lower lower end of the scale for the the sort of budget model of, um, and then Hatton's if they can overcome the the quality issues they've had with their model have kind of nailed the the high end um for a high detailed model uh, which kind of leaves the back the backman model in that that awkward kind of um space in the middle and um for me personally uh, the price that they that they generally sell for for sort of anywhere between kind of 115 to 125 pounds um it's just a little bit a little bit too much i think if i was if I was looking to spend that sort of amount on a locomotive, then um, I'd probably save that little bit extra and buy the Hatton's one just for the extra, the extra detail and the, the extra detail and the extra features that it has. Um, but uh, yeah, for the Backman model, I mean, I have no inside knowledge on Backman's uh, sales or or margins that they make on this model, but presumably, um, selling this one for ninety pounds, presumably Backman. And the retailers are both still making a profit on it. They're not selling it at a loss. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to, to sort of see how things work out in the future. Um, whether say so whether whether the Hatton's model has had an impact on Backman sales. Um, I'm not not sure. I know Backman did reduce the uh, retail price on their model um, when the Hatton's one was announced. Um, so they are a little bit cheaper than what they were, but um, still a little bit. A little, a little bit expensive, a little bit close to the Hatton's one, I would say. Um, and from a personal point of view, if if you could pick up a Backman one on general sale for sort of around about the hundred pound mark, I, I think personally, I would, I'd certainly be inclined to to buy more of them. I, I know they're a little bit sort of dated now um, in terms of the tooling and compared to the Hatton's one, but they're still still a very good model, um, very solid, good runners still a good level of detail um so yeah it'll be interesting to see see how things pan out but um let me let me know what you guys think um in the comments section do you think the the backman one still warrants a price tag of sort of over a hundred pounds or do you think it's overpriced now for for what it is um which one would you go for would you pick the hatton's one the backman or or do you like the hornby one um but yeah, let me know your thoughts and comments uh, in the section below. Um, that's it for now. Um, just a, a quick video. Um, in terms of the layout itself, I've not really made any progress. Um, I've added kind of a little bit of greenery here and there, um, but nothing worth making a video over. Um, the next big project really will be to build the uh, the office building, which is going to sit kind of just behind where the, the new 66 is at the moment. Um, but I'm still kind of in the very early planning stages uh, of that at the moment um, trying to work out the best way to construct it and uh, come up with a div design that I'm happy with um, so that's probably probably going to be my next my next major project um, but that, that's a bit it, about it for now um, 
thanks again for, for your support and for watching and um, as I say uh, please add any any comments or suggestions in the uh, in the section below uh, but otherwise I'll uh, I'll see you in the next one cheers bye bye